our life starts with a unitary event of sperm fertilizing the ovum and that give rise to the zygote and the zygote divides divides and keep on dividing to give rise to who we are but from becoming the journey of becoming a cell to a complete organism is complex and at least it requires cells to divide and give rise to more cell and this cell division time for each individual is different for example a drosophila embryo divides within 8 minute in contrast a human stem cell of a, which give rise to blood requires about 31 days to divide so the cell cycle is divided into several phases broadly they could be classified into G1 phase synthesis phase or S phase where the DNA replicates G2 phase or a preparatory phase for segregation of the genetic material and the mitotic phase where really the genetic materials are segregated and two individual cells are formed from one cell but this process of cell division cannot be uncontrolled if it goes uncontrolled then uncontrolled cell division would give rise to diseases like cancer so the cell cycle has to be controlled regulated and ha there are, there should be certain rules by which the cells can divide and give rise to a daughter cell so these sets of rule is implemented by cell cycle checkpoints if we look at the cell cycle there are several checkpoints occurring at several places during the lifetime of the cell one such checkpoint that is in the interface between G1 and S phase is a DNA damage checkpoint so it it looks for the damaged DNA if the DNA is damaged it would give the DNA give the genetic material a time to repair by its auto, re, uh, re, uh, auto correction method but if it's not it would decide whether the cell should progress into the cell cycle or not now another important checkpoint is at S phase because S phase is very important for a cell's life at this phase of time the cells replicate their DNA and getting ready to segregate their DNA to its daughter so the replication process has to be very precise and very stringently monitored and the DNA damage checkpoint in S phase does this job even after that at G2 phase when the replication is done somebody need to check that the replication that has occurred has equally replicated the DNA and and give rise to two identical copies of the DNA so that is monitored by the DNA damage checkpoint in the G2 phase now once the replication is done all the quality control is done now the DNA has to be packaged in form of metaphase chromosomes and they need to be equally aligned in the microtubules such that they can be segregated on the equal side and give rise to two uh, daughter cells and that is monitored by the spindle assembly checkpoint but have you ever wondered that how checkpoints work so just like a police checkpoint monitors over the passing vehicles or any other activities cell cycle checkpoint monitors how cell divides when cell divides and what is going inside the cell when the cell is dividing so you can understand there need to be a sensor which can sense that whether the genetic material is good damaged or need to be repaired and that information need to be conveyed to a signaling network that could net that could instruct the other downstream players to give rise to these physiological responses and Altogether, the cell cycle checkpoint machineries assure a quality assurance. Now, the top priority for the cell is to equally divide its genetic material to its daughter cells. Now, that process is monitored by DNA damage sensors. It appears inside the cell there are sensors which can understand whether there is a damage in the DNA or not and damage in the DNA would be 
understood by these sensors as an error signal. And that error signal is quickly conveyed to downstream signaling networks, which would try to reboot the system and give the cell another chance to correct their error. Now, the cell, the cell checkpoint and the sensor always keep an eye on it when the cell is replicating its DNA, making two DNA from one parental DNA. At this process, several mistakes could occur, but the cell surveillance mechanism always keep an eye on it such that no mistake can occur at this replication phase. And another important time when the replication is done and the cell need to segregate its chromosome, the chromosomes need to be aligned properly onto the spindles such that equal segregation could happen and proper tension could build up. And that is also monitored by G2M checkpoint. That is how we can understand that at several phases of cell cycle, there are checkpoints which monitor several aspects of cells uh, important physiological contents. Now, in the metaphase stage, if the cells are not properly aligned onto the microtubules on the spindles, then that's an error signal that is also detected by sensors that we would be learning about in consecutive videos. And that error signal would tell the cell to stop and try to realign the chromosomes properly onto the microtubules such that the chromosomes can equally segregate to the opposite poles. And if it happens, then the cell pauses at metaphase and do not proceed further to the anaphase. Now, have you ever wondered that what are the molecular components of the cell cycle checkpoints? Because cells has molecules. The molecules can interact in space and time to monitor several cellular processes. But what are the molecular components that give rise to the cell cycle checkpoint machinery? It turns out one of the most important molecules that give rise to the cell cycle checkpoint machinery is the cyclins and the CDK complex. Now, the cyclin and CDK complex, which work together, are very important for cell cycle checkpoint. Now, there are cyclins, which are proteins which appear cyclically throughout the cell, cell cycle time point. So as the graph suggests that this magenta line occurs in a periodic fashion, so as the blue lines. So these proteins are synthesized and degraded in a cyclic fashion. That's why they are known as cyclins. And there are several cyclins working at several phases of the cell cycle, which are selectively appearing at that particular cell cycle phase and getting degraded one, once that phase is over. But the cyclins cannot work in isolation. They need their partner, which are cyclin-dependent kinase. So the cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase interaction give rise to a functional cyclin-CDK complex. And the cyclin-CDK complex works like a kinase because the CDK are basically serintrionin kinase. They can phosphorylate several downstream effectors and give rise to and can modulate several physiological processes that would result in cellular division and can prevent or induce cell division. Now, throughout the cell cycle, from G1 to S, G2 to M, there are several cyclin and CDK complexes that work in combination. In G1 phase, the prevalent cyclin CDK complexes are cyclin D and CDK4-6, whereas in S phases, two types of cyclin CDK complex, complex work. One is cyclin E CDK2 and cyclin A CDK2. Whereas the G2 to M transition point is specially monitored by cyclin B and CDK1. Now, cyclin and CDK could be also modulated by other modulators like CDK activator kinase, which give rise to activatory phos phosphorylation into the CDK or the CDK cyclin complex. Or there are other cases where CDK inhibitors inhibit the CDK and thereby inhibiting the cyclin CDK complex to function. This is how 
cyclines, CDKs, and also cyclin CDK modulators together in a combination monitors how the cell cycle progression could occur and this constitutes of the molecular aspects of the cell cycle checkpoints. In my next video I would talk in way more details about cell cycle checkpoint and exactly the molecular details would be described in my next video. So stay tuned for my next video and for then like, share and subscribe. Thank you.